Okay, this lesson is a continuation from the previous lesson where we had a simple headlight bulb and a series circuit. The knowledge you gain from that circuit is going to help you to solve all the answers to this circuit. This circuit is more complex. It's actually two circuits. We have a series circuit where the battery current flows through the starter motor. And we also have a series circuit where the battery current flows through the wiring resistance, the starter solenoid coil, the starter switch, and back. So there's two circuits here. It's usually easier to solve the inside circuit first. And the reason is because you need to know the voltage drop here before we can figure out what the voltage is over here. So I recommend you solve this circuit first, solve this circuit second. Let's get down to some basics here. Batteries have internal resistance. I'm going to call it the label of R source. R source increases as batteries get smaller. So a big fat truck battery has much less resistance than a little skinny Honda Civic battery. R source increases as battery discharges. As your battery gets run down, then the resistance of the battery increases. And that's shown as this R source resistance right here. So this little square is everything that comprises the battery. It consists of the battery itself plus the representation of the internal resistance of the battery in one lump sum here called R source. R source makes battery terminal voltage decrease when current flows through the battery. So any current flowing through this battery in a counterclockwise direction will flow through this R source and cause a voltage drop. This voltage drop will subtract from the battery voltage, therefore the voltage out is only 10 volts while the circuit is active. So the R source drops 2 volts. The battery itself dissipates. Power gets hot from its own internal R source resistance. <coughs> Okay, this circuit bow has six voltage drops. There's a voltage drop, there's a voltage drop, there's a voltage drop, contacts. There's a voltage drop, motor itself. There's a voltage drop through the coil. There's a voltage drop through the starter switch. So there's six voltage drops. Notice up here we're given that the starter motor draws 500 amps and drops 8 volts. So we know the voltage across the starter motor is 8 volts. We know there's 500 amps of current flowing through this series circuit to power the motor. So that's the information that we're giving. Now I want you to find some other information once again using Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's Voltage Law as applicable. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, listed here are the things we want you to determine about this circuit. We want you to solve for the resistance of the R source, the actual resistance of the battery, resistance. Resistance of the starter motor wiring, which is this equivalent resistance here. Resistance of the starter solenoid contacts. Yes, contacts do have resistance. You need to know what that is. Resistance of starter solenoid coil. Coil has resistance. Voltage drop of each component. What's the voltage drop across our source? What's the voltage drop across the starter motor wiring? Voltage drop across the contacts. Voltage drop across the motor. Well, that's already given 8 volts. Voltage drop across the coil. Voltage drop across the switch. Starter switch. So that's the things we want you to solve. Like we said earlier, it's better to solve the series circuit first. This one. And then solve this starter switch circuit second. Because by solving the first one, you know the voltage drop here. That's kind of has to be used to help determine the voltage drops over here. So once again, we're going to pause. We're about to switch over to the answers. So if you don't want the answers, stop the video at this time. And since you haven't stopped the video, we're going to switch over with the answers now. Here are the answers. Look them over. If you got all these right, you definitely understand Ohm's Law. You understand Kirchhoff's Voltage Law. So congratulations. If you didn't get it right, go back, review the video, and figure out what 
what's causing your problems here. And make sure you show all of your work on scratch paper so you can back up and see if you made a mistake someplace. So welcome to the wonderful world of automotive electrical circuits. This is just the beginning. You'll find it very challenging and very interesting as you get deeper into it. So good luck.